Welcome to the Cross Border Interviews. This is the show where we sit down with local elected leaders from all corners of Canada. Today, we are honored to be sitting down and speaking with Woodstock Mayor Jerry Accioni. When you visit Woodstock, you'll find the air is clearer, the grass is greener, and the people are friendly and helpful. And there are lots of things to do. Woodstock's culture and heritage can be seen in their museum, county courthouse, downtown buildings, and beautiful Victorian heritage homes. And you'll also discover a wide range of stores and boutiques, retail businesses, and bustling farmer's markets, spacious parks, theaters, art gallery, museum, and annual events such as Canada's Outdoor Farm Show and Cowapalooza, and much more. Woodstock has much to offer you, your family, and friends all year round. So stay tuned and we'll be right back after a quick break with cross-border interviews featuring Mayor Jerry Accioni. In the heart of every thriving community lies a well-crafted strategic plan. But crafting such a plan requires expertise, experience, and a deep understanding of local needs. Enter Strategic Steps, your partner in municipal strategic planning. Strategic Steps team of experts have years of experience in municipal administration. At Strategic Steps, they just don't develop plans. They co-create homegrown strategies tailored to your unique community. They listen, they collaborate, they empower your community to thrive. Contact Strategic Steps today and take the first step towards a brighter future for your municipality. Call Strategic Steps at 780-416-9255 or visit strategicsteps.ca to get started. Mayor Accioni, thank you so much for doing this. Greatly appreciate it. I want to start the interview like I've started every single one of my interviews, so you're no exception to this first question. And I've got to know... Where did your sense of duty to serve Woodstock come from? I got to say community. Um, I did not grow up in a politically charged family. Um, I grew up trying to give back as much as I could. Uh, really started in high school. I love community. I believe I'm a huge believer in volunteerism. Um been with so many, I've been a Lions Club of Woodstock member for 26 years now. Um, I was the parade marshal for the city of Woodstock um, for 17 years. Did Please tell me you parade. have a sash for that. Please tell me you have no. a sash that says parade <laughs> no. marshal. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, I just really believe in community. I believe in giving back. Um and as my as I got older, got recognizing the importance of the municipality, um, politics kind of got on my radar. And I would say 08, 09 is when I started really paying attention. Um, I was thinking about running in 2010 to be a counselor. I, I held off and then I ran in 2014 and been blessed ever since to be in so politics. So there's a few things that I want to unpack there. And I want to start mm. by asking the question, why municipal? What was it about the municipal political realm that you said, okay, I've given back to my community. I love my community. I can go federally. I can go provincially. But at yeah. the end of the day, I'm going to, in 2014, choose municipally because I think that's where Jerry's voice can be best served sure. on council. What was going on in 2014? And why did you choose, at the end of the day, municipal? Because this is what affects every single person. Um, I'm a huge believer in municipal politics as far as wanting people to vote, be educated. Um, this is where a trail system starts. You know, this is where uh, a, a, a hockey rink starts. This is this is those are those points um, where you start being a community and having a say uh, of what could be here. I, I grew up, um, uh, it's not a secret, I, I've talked about it many times, that grew up poor, uh, single mom, five kids. Uh, we had uh, a good family base around us. 
uh, always helping us out and everything else. When I became in, in high school, became a Husky helper, started kind of giving back and, and, and helping other students and everything else. And from there, it's just, it's grown to be uh, doing whatever I can when I can. Had you considered politics prior to 2010? Because I know you said that you had thought about it in 2010, but you ultimately decided to pass. I will be, and I've said this on the show many times, I ran in 2010 in Ontario for a municipal politician, so we could have I matched up that. there, but I didn't win. You won in 2014, <laughs> I didn't yeah. win. So prior to two, 2010, 2010, yeah. had you even considered life as a politician or was that so far off your radar that it wasn't even something that you were even interested in? There was a couple of things going on here as a city of Woodstock that, um, uh, you know, recently bought a house, started paying taxes. You start paying <laughs> attention to how that money is being spent, started asking questions. I've never been very shy. Um, I, I don't say I make noise, but I, I like to ask questions. I like to know. And in, in my world, I always grew up, you had either a complainer or a doer. And I've always wanted to be that doer. So you either do something about it instead of sitting there complaining. Um, and, and that was it. Uh, unfortunately, went through uh, a divorce. Uh, my ex-wife and I, we get along great. Uh, my daughters were living with me um, uh, full time at the time. So I made the decision not to run in 2010. My daughters needed me. Um, at that age, I mean, they're under 10. So uh, they, they needed me. Uh, but in 2014, um, that was my time. I was ready. So I want to go back to that first election, if you don't mind, yeah, yeah. because yeah. I, I, you have now been on council for two and a half terms. I say that because yeah. you were elected two terms as councillor and in 2021, you were elected as mayor of the city of Woodstock. Going back to that- 2022, I was elected. 2022, as sorry, 2022. Yeah. 20, right. I knew that. I just wanted to see if you did. Of course, yeah. Come on. <laughs> see, I'm, I'm listening. <laughs> um, going back to that first election in 2014. Yes. Do you remember the issues that were being talked about in that election? I do. Yeah. Uh, we were talking about the Woodstock Hydro building or Woodstock Hydro being sold, sorry, um, to Hydro One. That was a big, big item. And, and just pr previous to that, there was a lot of uproar from the community about our beautiful art gallery. At the time, people didn't think it should have got what it is today. And of course, no one's complaining about it now because we get to enjoy it. Uh, but those were very hot topics at the time and a lot of taxpayer money being used. And uh, to this day, I still don't know if selling Woodstock Hydro was the best thing to do. I understand it now as a councillor and now mayor, why the council at the time certainly went that route. I, I can... I, I see the big picture now. And that's what the joy of politics gives you is now you get to see everything instead of just bits and pieces um, that I think a lot of people, unfortunately, uh, let's let's call out social media for what it is. If, uh, if it's on uh, Facebook, then it's real, right? <laughs> you're, you're speaking to my heart here, Mayor. You're sure, speaking to my heart. Absolutely. So, yeah. so I've got to ask that question then because I, because I, I am a big proponent and I, I, I truly believe that the municipality is the closest to the people. And you are, oh, you yeah. are in your community 24 seven. You don't go to Toronto. You don't go to Queens park. You don't go to the house of commons to do your job. You make decisions. You are in your community. Live and work here and play. Of course. Exactly. Which we'll talk about in a few minutes. But yeah. Is yeah. there an apathy in Woodstock? Would you say when you go ask people for their opinions in Woodstock as mayor, even as a counselor in that 2014, 2018 election, yeah. Yeah. do you get people wanting to give their feedback or is there sort of an apathy? As long as my water's turned on, as my garbage is picked up, I don't care what you're doing at city hall. As long as my property taxes are low as well. Sure. My experience says if it affects them, then they <laughs> want to know about it or have a strong opinion. Um, uh, nim nimbyism is real, not in my backyard. Of course, you're going to know that term quite well. Um, if, you know, uh, housing, of course, right now is such a big topic everywhere, every community. 
Um, everybody knows there needs to be more apartments and everything else, but nobody wants to look at that apartment. They don't want it built in their neighborhood, right? They don't want to change that. And unfortunately, we can't have one without the other. So how do you know you're doing the good of the community? Because you have your one vote on that council and you have to make some very tough choices every single week, every single month, yeah. every single yeah. year, particularly yeah. right now with a budget that's coming out and yeah. uh, a lot of downloading is coming down the pipeline from provincial and federal governments, but municipalities are stuck holding the bag. Mm -hmm. How at the end of the day do you measure success in your community when you vote on issues that are presented in front of you at council. How do you measure success? Wow, there's a there's a big one. Um, I guess I've never really thought of it that way. I've so how do you measure how you're going to vote on something then? Okay, well, yeah, because I, we I, we talked about thought, that apathy part, and yeah, now we're talking about yeah. you are there to elect you represent everyone, not just the people who voted for you, oh. but the people who disagree with you. I can percent. imagine you know after. Yeah, yeah. Six yeah. years and almost 10 years in office, yeah. 100% of the people do not agree with you. I'm sorry <laughs> to burst your bubble here. <laughs> How do you ensure that you are doing the best for the community with the decisions you make? That's why you, you know, I, I joke all the time. I don't sleep. Uh, I'm up all night thinking about things. It's uh, It weighs on you very heavily. Um, I joke all the time. Every single one of these grays has come with a decision that uh, has never been tough because you're right every decision i make as a person as a counselor or as a mayor because again one vote's one vote um i know people aren't going to like it so it doesn't matter how convinced i am in my head this is the right way to go the idea that somebody tomorrow is going to send me a message or dozens of people of course send me a message saying, how dare you? Or why are you doing this? Or, you know, and I, I truly wish people realized the work that goes into every single council meeting, every single decision I make, I can't speak for everybody, but every decision, every single one I've ever made in my life has come with a lot of thought. And I know I've made some decisions that are maybe controversial, but in the big picture, I've made them because it only makes sense to me ultimately. And a lot, of, I think, in municipal politics, particularly, we're not just talking about today's services. We are a growing city. So we're making decisions for decades. You know, I just became a grandfather in November for the first time. And I think of her often now of where, how, what Woodstock is she going to see growing up? And uh, is that, it hard to balance the future with the here and now, though, because the people who are here and yes. now, well, exactly. And that's what the question I was going to ask, because yeah. you, in, uh, you, you talked about it. So I'm not broach, I'm not broaching the subject yeah. that you haven't already talked about. But you, yeah. you said that you grew up poor. You grew up in a single yeah. uh, family household, yeah. one mother so and kids. And yeah. you now are deciding week to week paychecks for some people you're deciding yes. uh the what income they have because they have to pay property taxes sure is that the challenging part being a local municipal leader because you see these people firsthand you see them at the grocery store struggling and i can imagine there's days where you just want to help everyone but you you know the realities that the municipality faces oh yeah no completely and anybody that knows me knows i wear my heart on my sleeve uh, first one to be at any community table. Um, my wife and I both are big believers in, in trying to give back every way we can. I wish I had the finances to give back more. My advantage is people have blessed me with the opportunity to be mayor here. So I can have as much effect as I can with the uh, day-to-day living of residences. Um, there, There's a lot of responsibility that comes with every decision um it, again when we talk infrastructure we're, we're not talking a hundred dollars a thousand dollars we're in millions of dollars and only right? increasing and only increasing we've really you know we've seen what almost six percent kind of inflation there at one point it was it was crazy um we still need to keep the doors open here just like i have to and every single family 
that lives here in the city of Woodstock. So we see it at the grocery stores. We see it at the gas station. We see it in anything we purchase right now. There is some significant financial difficulties people are facing. Uh, so we have to look at that with an eye of, all right, is this a want or a need? Do we need this today? Do we need it tomorrow? Or is this something that's going to be a 20 year? So I'm, again, growing up poor, maybe I never really thought of debt in this position. Now, there's ways that we can use debt, interesting, so that future residents are helping to pay for that instead of being on the backs of the current residents. So it's a different idea in my head that, uh, you know, this past year has kind of taught me and and learning how to look at things differently so it's not on a burden today. Because city of Woodstock have been very fortunate that we've really been a pay-as-you-go city. But it's also the reason why I think we're probably a decade behind in infrastructure today. So I'm going to talk about the the issues that are going on in Woodstock here in a few seconds. But before I do, I wanted to ask one last question. And it's an sure. important question for me. Because... I took grade 10 civics class. I understand the roles and the responsibilities that the province, the federal government, the municipalities all play in this world. Now, I'm not painting a broad stroke, but I kind of am with this question. And for those who are about to send their nasty emails, send them to me so I can file them away in the appropriate location, a trash bin. How... Do the people of Woodstock understand that the responsibility of the municipality is very limited compared to what they think it is? Oh yes. Um, <laughs> when you talk, when you when you speak to people, do they talk about healthcare? Do they talk about oh, yes. housing, which is not traditionally a municipal issue, but it seems to be a municipal issue now? <laughs> well, and where it's even a bigger issue here in in city of Woodstock because we're a two tier system, so <laughs> we have the county of Oxford yeah. above us. So really, the city of Woodstock ourselves, we don't have a lot to do with any kind of health care or housing. That is not our focus, right? We don't get the funding from the province. We don't see a dollar of that coming in unless the county decides to spend a project here in the city of Woodstock versus Tilsonburg, Ingersoll, or one of our neighboring communities. Um, the general public, I think, especially look at this position, um, versus when I was a counselor, but as mayor, I swear they think I've got a magic wand. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, you can't go anywhere in the city without bumping into somebody or sitting down for a bite to eat without somebody coming to our table to say, you know, sorry to bother you, mayor, but I, I just need one minute. Um, and my heart goes out. It, it, it really, truly does. So the flip side to that statement there is how do you tell people it's not your responsibility without telling them, go talk to your MPP, go talk to your MP, because they're coming to talk to you for a reason. They, okay. you are the closest. And let's, I, I've heard this time and time again from mayors and counselors from across Canada. Um, you are the closest to the people. So therefore they feel mm -hmm. like they can approach you with any issue, any problem that they have, and you will now take it and go talk to their MPP or their MP because it's easier for the mayor to get their MPP on the phone sure. than it is 100%. a local resident. Absolutely. So how do you pass the buck without passing the buck in some sense? I've never, I, I mean, I hope everyone I've ever met with never feels that I've passed the buck because no, I, I I carry a notepad. Um, I'll take I'll take notes if it's it's lengthy. I'll ask for an email to my personal mayor's email, and we'll follow up with it. Um, I take a lot of pride, in I'll answer what I can, or I'll find out answers. Uh, sometimes that does mean I've got to get our MP involved or our MPP. Absolutely, but I won't walk away from it. No, um, because I, I, another thing I found is if they're asking me, there's probably 20 others that are wondering the exact same thing. So depending on those inputs, uh, I'll, I've used social media a lot. I'll send it out on my socials. If I think that this is something that is being asked or questioned, we'll, we'll put it out there. But uh, we've got, so municipalities are creatures of the province. Who are we kidding? right? We're, we're dictated by the province. 
So we we should be getting along. We should be partners at that table. And uh, with that comes federal. Um, so again, depending on the issue depends on where, but I will never back away. That that again, I'm a doer. So if something I can help, I encourage them to reach out. So before we turn to the uh, the city as a whole, I have one last question mm -hmm. because you you, br you brought it up in passing, but I I want to play the sandbox a little bit. Oh, now yeah. you chose this oh, life. You you chose this life as a counselor, as a mayor, but your family did not, <laughs> and they <laughs> might have supported you. And you just made mention that you go out to dinner with your wife, and someone will stop you and say, "Can I have one minute?" Every time, I, yeah. I've got to ask the question. How is your, I'm going to the grocery store for a bag of milk. I'll be back in 10 minutes conversation with your <laughs> wife go these days. 10 minutes, no. <laughs> you know, growing up, I would say in 2014, my life changed. Being in politics, being that um, I've had a, a quite a large following for a long time on social media. I've been very blessed. Again, lots of connections. Um, I've had a lot of people reach out to me. My daughters, who are now, you know, in their 20s, um, for many years, hated going to the grocery store with me, hated, you know, going to a movie theater in, in the city of Woodstock, um, especially in their teenage years, that became obvious. Uh, but now I can say my kids, my daughters love it. My wife is my biggest supporter. And when I say that, she is the only partner I know that watches every single council meeting I'm in. She watches, and you got to remember, I'm also on county council. So she watches four meetings a month just so we have something to talk about after hours. She's perfect for that uh, bouncing ideas off and talking about things. Does she give and, you crib notes? Jerry, you should have looked at the camera. You should have paused here a little bit longer. <laughs> I get those during the meeting, <laughs> right? <laughs> I'll, I'll get some of those messages during a meeting. Um, yeah, I can think of one time and she's such a, she just, all she said was breathe. <laughs> she sent me a message, breathe. <laughs> so I'm assuming if she watches everything you're in, hi, Jerry's wife. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sarah, that's Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Yeah. Um, so I Sarah, wanted, I'm really lucky to have her. Um, I want to turn to the city as a whole now because I'm cautious of time and I did not realize we're already 20 minutes into the interview. That's the great thing about these shows. They just fly by. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. before I ask this question, I'm going to preface it as I always do. This is a conversation between the mayor and myself. This is not a motion of council. This is not a direction of council. This is not a policy of council. This is in the mayor's own opinion and his opinion alone. If you have any issues with that, please remember he is one vote on council. That being said, Thank Mayor, you yes. in your opinion, what do you yes. believe is the biggest issue facing your community today? Oh, housing. Or um, issues. Housing? Issues. I, I, housing has got to be, that's top of mind. That is something I hear about, I would say, more than daily, virtually hourly. There is something to do with housing in my world right now. Um, the lack of housing, the lack of affordable housing um the transition housing right from uh you know unfortunate to say even in the city of woodstock fifty thousand people approximately we've got a couple of encampments and you know all the way through to the single family homes like we literally have such a wide range and i can tell you in the 2014 election 2014 to 2018 i mean we didn't really talk about housing that much the affordable housing was not a very big topic we never talked about homelessness i can you know i would have to watch them all minute by minute but i don't ever remember having a conversation about homelessness 2014 to 2018 as a counselor 2018 that started to be a conversation housing was a big big item in 2018 election and then uh, moving forward, it's only gotten more important as a, a booming city. So housing is definitely what I would put near, right near the top of the list. So you and I both know that housing is not a municipal issue, though. No, no. And, I, but, I think that's part of the issue with it. 
but exactly. And that's where I'm going to play a little bit here is the province needs to come to the table. The federal government needs to come to the table. Developers need to come to the table. The workforce needs to come to the table. Yeah. Are people knocking on Woodstock's door to say, we want to build? And the city is just trying to get behind the uh, get, sort of keep track and keep up to pace with all the developers who are coming in or are the the entities the legs of the spider if you will not wanting to sort of work together and the spider is sort of not going anywhere so take me through and give me some hope that woodstock is trying to solve this issue in a timely fashion because if not today when if not now then when sure. so the quick answer there is infilling is a must um, we are at our borders. It's no secret. We've uh, we did thirty five hundred approvals, plans of subdivision. My first, in fact, my first three months as mayor, our council approved three big plans of subdivision, which really took us to the end of our land supply here in the city of Woodstock. We have wonderful land around us. We are agriculture driven. Um, the last thing we ever want to do is take up good farmland. So as mayor, it's my responsibility, the way I feel, especially this term right now and, and sitting in this chair, is to make sure before we start looking at other pieces around the city, like most cities just try to go big, 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 big. That day will come. I, I hate to say that, and I apologize, but the reality is that when that day comes, I want to at least be able to stand in front of a group of people saying, listen, we infilled every single piece of property we have here in the city of Woodstock to the best of our abilities before we start looking elsewhere. And with the $1.2 billion building faster fund, um, there have was you a got lot your fair share, have, have you got your share of that yet? We have not. Okay. We have not. Um, that is uh, by our 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 calculations. What we've reported to Stats Canada, we've exceeded it by almost fifty units. Um, but we have not got the confirmation yet that we're looking for. And for uh, those who are listening to this, at uh, I just want to make sure I put this out there because it, sure. the the province is going to probably like announce this the day before this airs because that's how they work. And sure. I just want to make sure we are recording this on Wednesday, March six. So as yes. of Wednesday, March six, the Good province point. has as of today, today yes. no announcements. I don't know what's coming this afternoon, but yeah. you know what we we've taken that on that uh, we are doing everything we can here as a council. And this is the one thing that goes to our, our uh, priorities. We've recognized it as, as a council. It's a very strategic priority is housing. It's very clear. And this is one thing we've been unanimous on is getting as much um, housing here, option types from ARUs, additional residential units, of course, to um, again, single family homes but everything in between there. So uh, earlier this month, as recording this, uh, FCM released, well, earlier this year, I should say, FCM, the Federation of Canadian Municipalities, released a sort of survey that said it costs the average municipality $107,000 per unit, for per housing unit for infrastructure. Now, the that building faster- I expected it too. Okay, well, honest, that's, I read that. that's the average- <laughs> That's sure. That's the yeah, average. Yeah. Woodstock yeah. might be in a different position, but that's the average across Kingdom. Yeah. Now, the Building Faster Fund will probably help uh, deal with some of that infrastructure funding. And you talked about infrastructure a little bit, so I want to just talk about mm -hmm. that because infrastructure goes hand in hand with housing. I don't care who you are, where you are. Yeah. It, they have to go together because you can't just build a house that have no water to it. Right. No water to it, no roads to it, no sidewalks to it. Sure. Exactly. Yeah. While you're waiting for this money, while building is going on, you are now sort of picking up the infrastructure funding to potentially bring those roads, bring those water, bring that sewage, bring that underground sort of invisible infrastructure that yeah. people don't really think about every day to each one of these houses. Is it hard to balance growth? When you need to, when you know that you need to grow in a sustainable way, but you can't do it completely all in one shot, because if yeah. you do, you're not going to be able to grow sustainably. 
sustain yeah. the industry. That's it. Yeah. No. And there, I guess I referenced earlier where the idea of debt isn't necessarily a bad word, where I always grew up that debt was a bad word, you know, realizing that, no, we need this today for that we can build tomorrow. And then the next year, somebody can move in and, and be able to use a shower. <laughs> they need the water to go there or the dry. I just, w- I just want to make sure that people are aware. And I, I say that I've said this on the time, but debt is good. Yes. But yes. municipalities cannot run deficits. So there Correct. are two, oh, yeah. two different things there. Very that I just so. want to make sure oh, yeah. because we're like, Thank what you. do you mean? Woodstock's running a debt. What are you talking no, about? No, no. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no we, we we've used uh, reserves thank you for that clarification Chris yeah you know I've always been of the mind that you start saving I've been a saver once I've had that money saved now I will buy whatever it is I want to buy yeah step I- back the problem with that idea in municipal world in my world today is that means the taxpayer today is paying for all this huge growth we're going through 100% unless we kind of spread that out and we don't throw it all into, uh, you know, a a huge road. Um, So again, that's where I'm saying debt to me is finally, that's been the hardest thing to understand in my, my world. I, I'm going to ask a political question here and I apologize, but it is a political show and I've got to ask this question do you feel like you're being supported by other levels of government right now, the federal, the provincial, and even the county when it comes to building these houses? Houses. There's a little bit, I think, being in such, being in a, a rural area, I think a lot of my fellow mayors outside of in our townships, I don't think they understand the the severity of our issues how important they are to today um where i think somewhere like kitchener waterloo cambridge they all kind of looking at the exact same issues so i gotta again i don't sit there i've listened to some of the regional of waterloo those conversations seem to be a lot more about you know the the homelessness or the housing those you know transit where we don't when I sit at the county level, we don't really get into the, that, the city's needs. Yeah. You know, we've got three cities, Ingersoll, Tilsonburg, and Woodstock, where the majority of people live, but they're different conversations. My relationship with the province, I think, is extremely good. I got to say, I love being able to text a, a minister and get a response back. Um that is an incredible opportunity that I love as mayor. I have that, uh, again, it's an opportunity where we have those relationships. And so I truly believe they know what we are dealing with here in the city of Woodstock. Because again, I'm not shy. You know, I'll, I'll speak up and, and say it. So you you talk about housing, you talked about infrastructure as being the two biggest issues that you believe are facing the city of Woodstock today. Mm-hmm. Now, in August, I will be in Woodstock, and I'm going to be asking 100 people, hopefully 100 people, for those who are listening to Woodstock, if you see me in Woodstock in August, say hi to me. Yeah, I'm going to ask 100 people that exact same question. and I'm going to put dollar to dime on it right now that they will not say housing and infrastructure is probably their biggest issue. That is a very macro issue. They may, some may say it, but it probably is not going to be the top of the mind. They're going to talk about potholes. They're going to talk about parks they're going to be talking about swimming uh, swimming sure. pool upgrades this that or the other yep. how do you as mayor balance the individual needs with the community because the individual needs are the most important needs to them as we talked about earlier on mm-hmm. and when they pay their property taxes they want to make sure that their individual needs are being met by the municipality oh yes yes they they do want the parks they do care about potholes 100% you know and that's the day to day stuff and that's where we have city staff. We have phenomenal city staff. So I welcome questions of, you know, why aren't we doing something or, or could we change something or could we fix a pothole? I welcome, in fact, I, I want those. I need to know those in order to pass it through. Um, again, in my role these days, I find I'm more worried 10 years in the future than I am necessarily just on today. Today is today, yes. We want to answer those questions, yes. 
And I think council as a whole has to respond on a, um, a next couple year level and those day-to-day -day needs. But I really feel that I'm building relationships with the province, thinking of those big ticket items for youth hubs and, and, and you know, transition housing and those big infrastructure needs will come from the province. So before we turn to my last segment here, I want to ask the flip side of the first question about issues. Yeah. In your opinion, what does Woodstock get right? What is the thing when you go to AMO, when you go to Roma, you boast about, you just boast about to your fellow municipalities say, you know what, you may be doing it good, Woodstock's sure. doing it better. Well, luckily I can say quite a few things on that. We are known as a friendly city for a reason. I love our city residents. We have a lot of pride here in the city of Woodstock. We are a beautiful city. In fact, we just got awarded uh, last month another award for our parks. We've got uh, over 60 hectares of parks and trails here in the city of Woodstock. Um, we just added almost 40 acres to Southside Park, our main park. So we're going to be starting to develop that. Um, we have award-winning fields. Our, our baseball diamonds are award-winning. We have multi-use diamonds. We even got another cricket pitch being built next year. We are really diversifying here in the city of Woodstock of welcoming everyone. And there's always something to do here in the city of Woodstock, but we are definitely a manufacturing hub. When you talk about speaking with other municipalities, there is uh, dare I say, maybe envy of our location, right? We can't take credit as a city or as a council. We just live in such a perfect spot we're at the end of the 403, we're right on the 401. Within a hundred kilometers, you've got millions of people that live and can draw for employees to come here and work. So we have constantly businesses coming and knocking on our door, wanting to be in this location. So that's where we're thankful. And of course, uh, for those that don't know, the manufacturing side pay a much higher percentage of taxes. So by having more manufacturers here in the city of Woodstock, we're driving the price down for that resident in their taxes because they're paying two and a half times the amount. So Do people that, want to move important. to Woodstock? Because, oh, yes. it, 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 because I can imagine, like, I, I shouldn't I keep on saying that all the time. I, I get called out for it all the time on the show. But... <laughs> The average house on market, does it last that long? Like if someone puts our house on the for sale tomorrow, will it be gone within a week or a couple of days? Or oh, is yeah. it sitting there for- like The market week? has shifted. Okay. We definitely see that right across the board. But oh yeah, it was always a, a day or two listing. Uh, my, my wife is in the real estate industry. So, <laughs> you know, I, I see it all the time and hear it all the time from her. Um, about these bidding wars and how quickly things are going. And that's that's different. For those of us that lived here in the city of Woodstock, I've been here 40 years. It, it was not that way even yeah. 15, 20 years ago. So when Toyota first came to the city of Woodstock, I think they put us on the map for all the manufacturing. And then, of course, people started moving here. And it, it slowly kind of stepped to the last... I would say 10 years, we've just boomed. We've boomed. So now prices have gone up, but really when you compare us to, you know, Mississauga, uh, Burlington, Brampton, you know, even Kitchener, Waterloo, Hamilton, they're all coming this way because again, we're within a hundred kilometers of yeah. everything. We may not have a Costco in the city of Woodstock, but you've got, Three Costco's probably within a 30 minute drive. And really, when you look at it, if you lived in, in Burlington, would it take you a lot less than 30 minutes to go across Burlington to go to that Costco? No. <laughs> Here you hop in the 401 and go wherever you want to go. <laughs> This is a stupid question. This is this is only for my because you talk about getting on the 401 and it brings me back to my days where Kent Queens Park and tra traveling on that 401 back and right. forth. The GO train doesn't go out to Woodstock, does it? No. Does no, the GO bus? Yet. No, nope, not, not yet. yet. Not yet. Oh, oh, okay. 
Not yet. Not yet. Um, Keep that on the radar, everyone. (laughs) Um, I want to turn to my last subject now because it's my favorite subject. And as I said earlier on in the episode, I'm coming to Woodstock in August. I'm going to be bringing an RV with me and my partner, the executive producer of the show. And we're traveling across southwestern Ontario while traveling across Canada, visiting all these great municipalities. What are some of the tourist hotspots that you recommend to tourists coming to Woodstock, Jerry? Oh, again, it depends when you want to come, but we have a long list of events every every single month. I mean, August, you can be here for our City Beautiful Awards. Uh, you can be here and come to Cowapalooza, which is our okay. huge uh, music Thank festival. you for ad- saying that, because what the heck is Cowapalooza? And oh, why, Cal- do, why have Cowapalooza, not- oh, we're, we're, yeah, Cowapalooza is amazing. Cowapalooza is a music festival here in the city of Woodstock. It's absolutely free. Um, uh, come enjoy music Friday and Saturday. We got uh, tents set up. There's so much to do for the entire family. Again, and it's free. And it's a big draw to the area. So we're not the what you think of Woodstock, we're not necessarily the Woodstock you heard about in the 60s, but we certainly have a lot of good concerts and everything going on here in the city of Woodstock. But my, you go to tourism, and I don't really look at it so much as tourism. I want to, I've always said as a councillor, as a member of city council, my first priority is our residents. I want them to love living in the city of Woodstock as much as I do. So if that draws in, you know, 10,000 people for one of our Cowapalooza concerts. Hey, all the better. That's the bonus. But I think my priority is, you know, looking at residents. Um, our, we have a very historic downtown. If you go and visit a lot, and you will be, mm-hmm. um, take a note of our downtown because it is beautiful. We have a lot of very historic buildings. Um We've got an amazing art gallery and a museum second to none. We have a library and a courthouse that is absolutely beautiful. There is so much to see and do here. Is that yeah. it behind you right there in that picture? Uh, that's it right is. Above you? That's our okay. library. For those who yeah. are listen, watching this on YouTube, that's what we're talking about. For those who are listening to this via audio, well, go yeah. over to the YouTube, subscribe. Yeah, go, go watch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yes, yeah, that, that's our library. It's uh, it's absolutely beautiful. We, I, I love bumping into people or the amount of people that pop in here to City Hall just to comment to our, our, our staff about how beautiful and like historic looking our city is, I think is lost on those of us that live here and have taken it for granted for so long that there's a lot of history here. In fact, City of Woodstock celebrating uh, 125 years as being a city uh, in 2026. So we've, um, we've been established for a long time. Where do you go after a long day of council meetings, after a long day of meetings with Oxford County, after a long day of just being with residents, is there a place that you get away to to decompress, to just let it all go and know that tomorrow morning, you're going to have to get back up and make Woodstock better off than you left it the day before? Um, we, my wife, when I say we, my wife and I love going out. We're, we're foodies. Uh, we love going to all our local restaurants. Um, we're, we don't cook as much at home. My wife is just as active as I am for the record. So she's involved in women's groups, the Zonta groups. She's business groups here in the city. She volunteers all over the place. So those time, in fact, the joke is always we drive somewhere to meet have a bite to eat and then we both go out to another meeting and then come nine ten o'clock we'll meet back at home then and enjoy our evening but uh we have a, a local brewery here in town that um my wife doesn't drink <laughs> but I like to go all the cold beer i get to talk to a bunch of residents here in the city of woodstock and uh you know what i, I enjoy that Again, I'm not shy of, of I don't I don't mind people coming up to me and 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 talking because that's what it's about. That's my job. You know, I worked very hard to be, I wanted to be the mayor of the city of Woodstock for that reason, because I want to help them. 
So at the beginning of this show, we talked about you. We talked about your duty to serve. We're ending this show now by talking about the city of Woodstock. And I've got to ask the question that I, I think every mayor knows how to answer. It's just, I like getting it on the record a little bit. What makes Woodstock such a unique place to live, to work, and to raise a family? Again, I got to go to our, just our natural history here, our beauty, just the lifestyle that you can live, you know, um, think about it, 60 hectares of trails and parks in a relatively small city. We are surrounded. We have so many parks and trails here. You can have such a great life um, that's still affordable, you know, relative speaking, depending where you're coming from or if you've been here all day, but we're still a, a relatively affordable city if you're coming to visit us. Um, and so much beauty that I love, I am so proud to be, to call city of Woodstock my home and represent them every single day that, um, and I know many people share that with me. Your worship, Mayor Jerry, thank you so much. This Jerry, has been yeah. an honest to goodness, great 45 minutes of just honest to goodness conversation. I feel like we've forgotten how to do that this in this society, <laughs> in this world of social media. But thank you so much for sitting down and talking about yourself, talking about the city of Woodstock and talking about some of the great tourist destinations that I'm going to see this summer. So thank you so much. It's a, a pleasure to join you on the, for you to come on the show. But it's an yeah. honor to just sit down with someone like yourself and talk about municipal politics. Greatly appreciate it. Well, you know what? I'm blessed. I've been a fan of your show for a while. I've been watching it. I do enjoy it. Uh, when you reached out, I got that giddy feeling <laughs> again to, uh, you know, just talk about the city of Woodstock. So thank you for being willing to to speak with me today and, and uh, just doing what you're doing, because I think it's so important for the general public to understand where the city limits to what we can do versus the importance of being partners with province and, and federal is really, really important. Thank you so yeah. much. So in August, please let me know when you're coming and we'll grab lunch. Now, if today's episode sparked your interest, hit that subscribe button now. Stay in the loop with all our diverse content covering everything from municipal affairs to our in-depth cross-border interviews and our eye-opening exploration of local governance in the political trenches, local government at work. We are your go-to platform for comprehensive municipal coverage committed to keeping you well-informed as well as engaged. Now, your support is the backbone of our growth and the maintenance of the top-notch content you have come to love. If you can, consider backing the show. Every contribution, big or small, amplifies the depth and the breadth of our programming. Find the support page link on the Cross Border Interviews website today. Until next time, stay informed, stay engaged, and most importantly, just keep talking.